All right, so next up we have calculating the mean of three, seven, and eight. So to calculate the mean, like we know how to do, is we're gonna add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of numbers. So mean is gonna equal three plus seven plus eight divided by the number of numbers, which in this case, everybody, is what again? The number of numbers in this case will be three. One, two, three, right there. And so we'll go ahead and calculate now. And all we have here is three plus seven is 10, plus the eight is 18. So that's gonna be 18 divided by three, and that will give us six. Now, there's our answer, it's gonna be six, it's gonna be A, but before we move on, I really wanna take a moment here to, again, help you embrace and help you learn truly what mean actually is. So, everybody, my first question is this, have you ever been in a, just been bored, had a pencil in your hand, and tried to balance the pencil with one of your fingers? Who's been there? I think we all have, right? We've all been bored enough to do that. So this is gonna be a very straightforward example. So let's go ahead and say everybody that we're trying to balance a pencil. In this case, it's gonna look more like a rectangle because you know I can't draw. But let's go ahead and say we're trying to balance this pencil on a fingertip. My party people, for this pencil to be perfectly balanced on my fingertip, what has to happen in terms of the weight on the right side and the left side? What has to happen for the pencil to be balanced. Right, the weight on the left and the right side, they have to be equal. They have to be equal. If we have more weight on the right side, well, it's gonna go down on the right. If there's more weight on the left, well, it's gonna go down on the left. And I think that's a concept that we can all appreciate. We can all think of that, cool. Now, let me show you this, everybody. What was the mean that we just calculated? There it is right here, it was six. I want you to think of the mean as that balance point, everybody, right here. Here's the balance point, there's the six. And what does this mean? It means that, hey, the difference between here, the balance point, and either end, it's gonna be the same. It's going to be the same. Let me show you this right here, everybody. Let me go ahead and erase these blue arrows, and let's just play a little game. Everybody, first up, let me just write the numbers down again so I can move them around. Y'all tell me, the three over here, does it belong on the lower side or the upper side of six? In your opinion, everybody. Does the three belong? Yeah, that's gonna be lower. Not much of a question there. So I'm gonna place the three over here. All right, everybody, quick question. How far away is three from six? How far away is three from six? Yeah, that's gonna be three. So let's just go ahead and write a three right over here. Perfect. So the three that we had was three away from six. Now let's go ahead and grab the seven. If I grab that seven, should it be on the lower or upper half of six? That's gonna be on the upper half, sounds good. If I throw it on the upper half, how far away is six from seven? How far away are six and seven apart? That's gonna be one, absolutely. So let me throw a one right there. Now, everybody, one more. Let's grab that eight. Will it be on the lower or upper half of six? Which one? Upper half, of course. That's greater than six, so that's where we'll put it. So let's go ahead and put it on this side. Everybody, how far away is six from eight? Yeah, it's two away, so let's go ahead and put that two right here. Now, you may be asking, why did I go through all of this trouble? just to show you what mean really means. Mean is like the balance point. Everybody help me out. The number that we see here on the left side is three. So we are a total of three away from six. That's the weight. Think about the right side. Everybody, what's two plus one? Two plus one, that's three. So look at that, everybody. We got three here on the left, three on the right. Are we balanced? Are we balanced here perfectly at six? Yes, we are. So that's what mean actually means. Again, everyone here already knows the formula. Add everything up and divide by the number of numbers. We know that, sure. But do you know what it actually is interpreted as? And that is, again, the balance point. So 
So the correct answer here, again, in my party people, is A6. But let's see if we can use that moving forward with more problems. All right, let's try this question here. And as always, everybody, question sentence first. We see that it says, how far is seven laps around the track? Okay, so take that in, everybody. This is not some hyper-specific geometry word. It just says, how far is seven laps around the track? So everyone, we see here that it says we're dealing with a, per, or a rectangle. And when we draw a rectangle, this rectangular track, everybody, one lap around this track. So let's say we're starting from right over here. Let's do one lap around this track. What are we going to call that? We go through the length, the width, the length again, and then the width. My party people, what are we dealing with in terms of one lap? There's a geometry word for that one. That would be called the what? That would be the perimeter. Absolutely. That would absolutely be the perimeter. So everybody, if one lap equals the perimeter, how am I supposed to calculate seven laps? Let's say I know what the perimeter is, everybody. Let's pretend, let's pretend that the perimeter is 20. What am I gonna do with that 20 to get seven laps instead of one lap being 20? Yeah, we'll multiply, exactly. So seven laps would be seven times the perimeter. So now that we know that, now that we know that, boom, we've got our game plan. We know what we want, seven laps. We know what we have, a rectangle. What can we do with a rectangle? Here's the connection. I can calculate the perimeter because the perimeter is one lap. Once I calculate the perimeter one time, I'll just multiply it by seven because that'll give me seven laps. Here we go. Perimeter formula. Let's write it down the correct way. Double the length plus double the width. Now let's go ahead and plug in the values that we have, which are going to be 70 and 30. So we plug in over here, two times 70, two times 30. So that'll give us 140 and that'll be 60 over here. And so we add 160, or excuse me, 140 and 60 together. And that'll give me 200 meters. Boom. So there we are. But the answer is not C. It's absolutely not. Because we said, again, once we find the perimeter, that we're going to multiply it by seven. So now we're going to do that here. Seven multiplied by 200 meters. That's going to give us 1400 meters and so my party people the correct answer for this problem here is answer choice d 1400 meters and let's go ahead and give this next one a shot here so the question sentence it's going to go ahead and read which of the following is the ratio representing apples to oranges okay sounds good so this is a classic question where we just want to write the ratio in simplest form. So I want to make sure I have apples as the first value and it's compared to oranges. And I see that over here, you have 18 apples, 42 oranges. And so what I'll do very quickly is just write 18 over here, 42 under oranges. And from here, all we have to do is simplify. So to simplify, we can treat it like a fraction, 18 over 42, or you can just ask yourself the same question. What number can I divide out of both 18 and 42? And what's the biggest number? We want to think about that biggest value. And if you're saying six, absolutely correct. Absolutely. We'll divide out the six on the left and the right. Once we do that, we're going to have three to seven. So again, the ratio of 18 to 42 is equivalent or the same as a ratio of three to seven, which is answer choice C.